House Bill 229 by Lynn relative to identification for voting purposes. Madam Speaker, members, the Senate bill is on the desk. Chairman Lynn, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to substitute and conform to Senate Bill 125. Representative Lynn moves to substitute and conform to Senate Bill 125, properly seconded without objection. So ordered. Chairman Lynn. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move passage of Senate Bill 125 on third and final consideration. Representative Lynn moves passage of Senate Bill 125 on third and final consideration, properly seconded. Mr. Clerk, call for First Amendment. House Local Government Committee Amendment number one spread on the member's desk. Chairman Hill, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Amendment number one rewrites the bill to specify that an identification card issued by a county or municipality or entity thereof, including a public library, shall not be evidence of identification for voting purposes. Move to adopt. Chairman Hill moves adoption of House Amendment number one, properly seconded. All those in favor of adoption of House Amendment number one say aye. Those opposed say no. You adopt. Next amendment. House Local Government Committee Amendment Number Two spread on the member's desk. Chairman Hill, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Amendment Number Two corrects a typographical error in Amendment Number One by adding a period to the last section or last sentence in Section Two. Move to adopt. Chairman Hill moves adoption of Amendment Number Two, properly seconded. Discussion on the amendment. All those in favor of Amendment Number Two say aye. Those opposed say no. You adopt. Next amendment. Amendment Number Three by Fitzhugh, Madam Speaker, members, it was not timely filed. Representative Fitzhugh, you're recognized. Move to withdraw. Without objection, withdrawn. Next amendment. No more amendments, Madam Speaker. Representative Lynn, you're recognized. Madam Speaker, I renew my motion. Representative Lynn renews her motion. Discussion on the bill. Representative Fitzhugh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I guess this is a question to the sponsor. Um, the, we were on the Senate bill, and then there was an um, amendment. As I understand the Senate bill, did it, does it include student IDs? So, The Senate bill did include the state uh, college IDs, but the House amendment took that out. The, the amendment that we just uh, adopted uh, took that out? Yes. So this bill is not then the Senate bill. Uh, it's a Senate bill as amended. Correct. So if we pass it, it'll have to go back to the Senate a different position than the Senate has as far as student IDs. Exactly. We will have to have a conference with the Senate or they can accept our amendments. Thank you, ma'am. Representative Turner. I mean, excuse me, Representative Dean. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Will the sponsor yield? Yes, sir. As I understand it, under this bill, only a state of Tennessee issued ID will be proper to as identification for voting. Is that correct? It is a state issued ID or a federal ID, such as a passport or a military card. Okay. Let's suppose that, say, I live in the city of Eastridge, which is right on the, or I own property in the city of Eastridge, which is right on the border of the Georgia line. I do not reside there. I live in Georgia, yet local ordinances allow me to vote on my property so that I can be represented uh, by those who tax my property. Mm -hmm. How would I go about voting? if I had a Georgia driver's license? A Georgia's driver's license would not be evidence that would be acceptable to vote for a photo ID. You would have to have a different photo ID for the state of Tennessee. So in other words, I wouldn't be able to vote without a state-issued ID. I, Correct. I could not vote. With this legislation, we are trying to most closely match the legislation from Indiana that passed that went all the way to the Supreme Court and was deemed constitutional. And that legislation only permits an Indiana ID or a federal ID, uh, not out-of-state IDs nor local IDs. Do you know if the state of Tennessee will issue a state of Tennessee ID to someone who does not live in the state of Tennessee? Yeah. What is that? Representative Lynn? I'm not sure. I know that to register to the vote, if you swear that you are a United States citizen and that you live at that address, that's where your occupancy is, um, you've committed a crime if you I'm, I'm not if you talking have about. It. I'm not talking about voting on where you, mm -hmm. where you reside. Mm -hmm. There are several cities in the state of Tennessee mm -hmm. that allow you to vote on your property that you own. And we, we've heard the bills up here several times where different localities want to have uh, that option. 
So I'm talking about someone who does not reside on the property and lives out of state. If they could get an ID, a valid ID, to vote on their properties uh, that they've already been granted the right to vote on. So you're saying they're a property owner in the state of Tennessee and they want to get a state ID just for voting purposes? In order to be able to vote because their state of Georgia, Kentucky, or whatever right. would not be allowed, would not be accepted as a proper form of ID. To my knowledge, they would also have to give that state of Tennessee address on that state issued ID, uh, probably where their property is. And so, to my knowledge, that would be, they would be able to do that. I, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, that, that does concern me, and I'll try, to, I'll try to get an answer to it, but thank mm -hmm. you. Representative Johnny Turner. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would the sponsor yield? Yes, ma'am. I rise in opposition to this bill because it's a form of voter suppression. At a time when we should be encouraging all Tennesseans to have the opportunity to vote, it reminds me of the times when my ancestors had to count the number of bubbles in a bar of soap. I had to recite the Constitution, all devised to deny them of our God-given right to vote. When we pledge allegiance to the flag each time, we say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There is no justice as long as there is any member of this country who has impediments put in his or her way so that they cannot exercise that God-given right. Number two, this is another attempt, as I see it, to deal with the issue that was settled on the local level when Memphis went to court and had the voter ID from the library recognized as a legitimate form of voter ID. And what, number three, it puts the state again in a very awkward position when we are in Pose rules and regulations and legislation that the locals have voted for, it has been approved by the coast, and yet, by the same token, speaker after speaker after speaker will say, we don't want the federal government telling us what to do. We don't want the federal government doing this and that, and yet, on the state level, we're doing the same thing to the local. And number three, and lastly, it is our right, I feel, that every one of us, we should be in the business of encouraging all Tennesseans to vote because it is a God-given right. My ancestors lost their lives for this right, and the 1965 Voting Rights Act supposedly changed all of that. Here we are tonight. Monday, March the 25th, 2013, with another form of voter uh, suppression intended to keep our citizens who need, this is our right, and when I say our, I'm only not speaking about me as an African American, but all Tennesseans and all Americans, we should have the right and the privilege to <laughs> vote without having to jump through hoops and deal with oppressive laws that are designed to suppress that precious right that we have. Thank you very much, and I will vote against this bill. Representative Hardaway. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Will the sponsor yield, please? Yes, sir. Um, is there any part of this bill that deals with identifying criteria or the process for establishing uh, suitable IDs? No. 
And let me uh, try to make sure I'm clear. Uh, the leader said that the Senate version allowed for student IDs from higher, inst higher ed institutions to be used, but this version does not, this the version, House version as amended. <clears throat> this version does not. The original law that was passed by the General Assembly did not allow college student IDs. The way this was first drafted, it allowed all state-issued IDs. Well, of course, by inference, that would mean a college-issued ID because that is a state institution and it's a state issued ID. So people sort of picked that out as something that would be included. But now the amendment that um, the chairman put on the bill and the House adopted does exclude the college IDs. And that would mean students and faculty and staff, none of their IDs would be suitable for voting purposes? Madam Speaker, Representative Lynn. Madam Speaker, may I ask the sponsor of the amendment to speak to that? You may. Representative Hill. <laughs> Chairman Hill. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Representative Hardaway, would you address Chairman Hill for the amendment question? Thank you, ma'am. The question, uh, Chairman Hill, was whether the elimination of the higher ed IDs also included banning those IDs that would be used by faculty or staff members. Chairman Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Hardaway, it was the, it's my understanding that it was the intention of the committee by a majority vote to take out the section of Chair Lady Lynn's bill that dealt with college IDs as to the intent, the original intent of the legislation as to how far those college IDs would have past tense qualified for faculty and staff and things like that. You know, I, I can't speak to the original intent of the legislation. I can speak to what folks can find online at the yeah, video of the committee meeting that there was a lot of discussion about this and there was a general consensus, majority consensus feel that college IDs are too easy to duplicate they're too easy to access, they're too easy to acquire, some of them do not even have expiration dates on them, you know and that that poses a danger and a hazard to, uh, the to the voting the process, and so that's why it was taken out the of the legislation. And I am again speaking in general terms, not trying to speak for each individual member of the committee, but we had a lot of conversation about it, but it was just to take that section out of the legislation. Okay, and I I'm going to have to oppose the bill. I, I thought maybe there was some balance. Uh, of course, I supported the library IDs. I thought that the criteria for securing them was sufficient to identify the individual who was uh, being issued the ID. And I would think if we don't believe that the student IDs, the employee IDs, faculty IDs for our higher ed institutions are secure, and they're allowing access to the facilities, access to certain programs and funds uh, that the institution administers, that we wouldn't exclude the ID, but we would uh, rather develop a process and criteria for making sure that that ID met certain standards. Uh, so that's what I would suggest would be the, uh, the fairer way to go about this. But thank the, the sponsor for listening. Representative Thank Parkinson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Will the sponsor yield? Yes, sir. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Madam Sponsor. Way back here in the back. <laughs> now, you know, we've had a lot of discussion regarding this bill. And I was on both committees, discussed this bill as it was coming out. And I feel like I was hoodwinked, bamboozled. The end of round play was ran and you scored a touchdown, scored the final dunk, and now you're here on the House floor with this bill. Thank you guys for listening. Glad I got your attention. The, the college IDs were initially acceptable 
on the first version of this bill in, in subcommittee. And it was passed, if I'm not mistaken, by a voice vote. Got to the full committee, and the college IDs were taken out by amendment by my colleague, Representative Durham, if I'm not mistaken. And I remember asking you, were you OK with this amendment? And to my surprise, you said yes. And that's when the fight began. And we talked about college IDs and the amount of security involved with college IDs, whereas college students, college students' accounts, their financial accounts are placed on these college IDs. Their, um, their, their ability to enter into the campus is, is, is placed on these college IDs. And then there was the argument of college IDs being easy to duplicate. Well, to the sponsor and to, to my, my colleagues, I submit to you that there's not an ID that we possess in this land that cannot be duplicated. Whether it's a federal military ID, whether it's a college ID, a Tennessee driver's license, a state ID, you name it, it can be duplicated. But here's my point. Here's my simple point. If college IDs carry so much so, so many secure items, such as the amount of money a college, a college student possesses, and uh, um, the ability to enter into buildings, their pictures, and other information, which actually has more information on it than your driver's license, your Tennessee driver's license. Why was this ID not acceptable? Or why was this ID pulled out of the legislation? There's a reason why the ID was pulled out of the legislation, because that was not the point in the first place. The point of the matter was simply this, <clears throat> to obstruct, well, let me use another word, to run interference of a decision that is to be made by the Tennessee Supreme Court in regards to library cards that, are being, that were pr being proposed to be used by the city of Memphis. And without taking still an all the argument, if the city of Memphis was created or the charter for the city of Memphis was signed off on by the state, then I submit to you that would make the city of Memphis a state agency. And if the city of Memphis is a state agency, I would submit to you that the city of Memphis should be able to and should be authorized to decide what kind of ID that they would allow to be used for voting. And thank you, Madam Sponsor. Representative Gilmore. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Will the sponsor yield? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I wanted to just re-verify something because it's so loud in here, I couldn't hear very well. When um, Representative Dean asked you about out-of-state ID, presently you can vote with an out-of-state driver's license. Uh, does this legislation prevent a person from voting with an out-of-state driver's license? Yes, ma'am. So they can no longer, so college students who are here with driver's license, with, with valid driver's license from a different state uh, would not be able to use that as a form of identification. They would need a federally issued photo ID or a state issued photo ID. It would be state, you're just saying it, they cannot use it if it's not issued by the state of Tennessee? Correct. Okay, so we will be eliminating another group of people from voting who previously was able to vote uh, with this legislation. Is that correct? They could always get a, if they are truly a resident here and they do file to vote here and swear that they are a resident here and a United States citizen, they could always get a state issued photo ID. Okay, and second question I wanted to ask, um, does this legislation, would it overrule the courts that have allowed the Memphis citizens to use library ID? Would this legislation nullify the court's decision? It doesn't nullify any decision. What this, it doesn't nullify any decision. What this legislation will do is really clarify the original intent and the original intent was really for a state-issued ID. Um, the way it was drafted, 
people took it that you could get away with using a local issued ID as long as there was a photo on it. However, that was never the original intent of the law, so this is clarifying that original intent. Do you know if the court decision allowing Memphis citizens to use the library photo ID is still standing? Do you know the status of that? I do not know the status. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Armstrong. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, just listening to this bill, understanding that someone who is a property owner in Knox County, if you're a property owner, you can vote in municipal elections. And under this bill, not allowing property owners to vote, you know, the governor of this state was the mayor of Knoxville. He won the mayor by 1,500 votes. There were over 3,000 people that voted in that Knoxville municipal election that were not residents of the city of Knoxville. They were property owners and they vote. I'm sure that of those 3,000 people that voted as property owners, a lot of them lived out of state. Under your bill, this would have changed the outcome of that city election that now we have a sitting governor that benefited from the law. So I want us to understand what we're doing here. We're changing the way that the city of Knoxville elects their mayors. We're changing the way the city of Knoxville elects their city councilmen. You know, and I think that we're wrong in changing the law from a bill such as this. We're sitting here preempting the way that Knoxvilleans vote. And that is the repercussions behind this bill. Another thing is our University of Tennessee students. It was stated if they don't have a state Tennessee driver's license, that they can't vote. You know, what you have, and then they have to get a Tennessee driver's license. They pay out-of-state tuition, but they live on campus. We have 12,000 students that live on the campus of the University of Tennessee. Now, I would say maybe 3,000 of them are out of state. They pay out of state tuition. You know, we will be changing them from being out of state and paying three times the amount that someone's out of state in order to just to be allowed to vote. I think that this, this bill here is poorly written. It doesn't take into account about local governments. It doesn't take in consideration of students. And, and let me tell you something. If the T TSA, and I don't know where you want to call them or not, the tennis TSA, I call them a thousand standing around at the airport, but they accept student IDs. You know, they accept birth certificates. People lose their license and they get on airplanes. You're going to tell me the person can get on an airplane and can't go in the va uh, booth and exercise the basic principle what this country is built on, and it's your right to vote. You know, and so let's not be a part of suppression. Let's be a part of the solution. This is creating a problem. Thank you. Representative Love. And that is established by law. Thank you. Sponsor, yield. Or yes, sir. A few questions. I just want to ask about is the uh, Tennessee issued photo ID designed to validate the identity of the person? Yes. So if it's designed to validate the identity of the person, are we then saying that we don't believe that other states have adequately identified that the person is who they say they are? What we're doing with this legislation is trying to most closely match the legislation that passed in Indiana, because that legislation did survive sure. all the way to the United States Supreme Court. And that is what this legislation is attempting to do. And the reason I'm asking is I have seven colleges, and by virtue that have seven locations of college students. And I'm wondering if the college student who is from Kentucky, who works at a federal agency, and then is given a federal ID, Mm -hmm. cannot use their state-issued ID from Kentucky, but has to then use a federal ID to vote. They can use their federal ID to vote. Yet the Kentucky ID identified that they were who they said they were. Mm -hmm. 
So a student that then does not work for a federal agency and may be in the same dorm room with this other student can't vote, although they're from the same state. Well, they would be able to vote. They just have to get a state-issued ID or use a federally-issued ID. And the problem is you can get a state ID in Tennessee faster than you can identify yourself as a resident of Tennessee for the purpose of reducing tuition. You see where I'm going with that? So a student who stays in Tennessee for nine months going to school here can't get in-state status, but they can vote here. And they may be paying $20,000 more in tuition, getting taxed in a sense, but can't vote here unless they get a Tennessee ID. That's just my concern about these college students and maybe them not knowing because they voted last year with their out-of-state IDs. And that's just my concern about these college students who live here and pay sales tax in our cities, and they need to also be represented. I know some of them do vote absentee, but I'm concerned about those students. Well, that's all I just want to ask you about. Representative Thank McCormick. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And it seems like we have to go through this every year on this issue. This idea that this is some plot to suppress voters let me give the little annual history lesson here. Just a few years ago, about five years ago, a state senate election was stolen in the city of Memphis. Just a few years ago, it was stolen in the city of Memphis. There's a whole book written about an election box in Nashville that I just read, where the votes were stolen. This was in our lifetimes. This is not in the 1800s. The Memphis public television station just released a little video where the former NAACP chairman in the city of Memphis talks about how the machine in Memphis would get people in buses and go from polling station to polling station to polling station to polling station and voting them over and over again. This is not something that people have made up here. This idea of voter suppression is just not true. That's not what anyone is trying to do here. I'm getting tired of hearing it. What we, don't want to, what we want to suppress is dead people voting. Dead people should not be able to vote, but in this state they have. That's what we're talking about here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Cassida. M Madam Speaker, I move previous question. Previous question has been called for. Is there objection? We're on the board. Those in favor of previous question vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their votes? Mr. Clerk, Lawyer's aye. Mr. Clerk, take the vote. Aye, 64, 30 nays. Previous pre question prevails. We're voting on House Bill 2, I'm sorry, Senate Bill 125 as amended. All in favor vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed vote no. Mr. Clerk, take the vote. Aye, 65, 30 nays. Senate Bill 125, having received a constitutional majority, I hereby declare it passed. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is tabled. Next bill.